Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the service. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe that we've been stuck inside for another month. Um, time's going by fast, um, but it's also a nice time for us to to pause and to spend time with God, to reflect, uh, to look at our lives, to see what's important, what's not important. And it's just a privilege and a pleasure for me be, to be able to come and worship with you guys this evening again. I know my camera looks like it's bright and beautiful outside, and I am recording this in the morning. Um, but yeah, um, welcome to the evening service, and I trust that you are truly, truly blessed. Let us pray. Father God, as we come into your presence this evening, may we know your Holy Spirit presence. May we know your power, your love, your grace, just a sense of hope, a sense of joy that we have in Christ Jesus. So Lord, envelop us tonight. Um, just love us. Let us feel your presence. Let us know your touch. Open our hearts and our minds as we hear the word, as we read, as we listen. Lord, may we just know that you are God. Bless us this evening, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've chosen two songs tonight, um, not necessarily pertaining to the theme, um, but in a sense, to do, um, because we're speaking about the glory of God. Um, the first one, sing along, um, listen if you like, is a reminder of a promise. And it's called Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The second, which we'll sing later, is what a friend we have in Jesus. And now I'm just going to ask you to enjoy, to sing along with Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song.
am happy and blessed Watching and waiting Looking above Filled with His goodness Lost in His love taken from 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 to 14 and then chapter 5 verses 6 to 11. 1 Peter 4 12 to 14 and then 5 6 to 11. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering through something as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of the glory and of God rests on you. We then go to chapter 5 from verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Just that far, and we ask that God bless that reading to us. What a way to start. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. I remember something that Kevin once said to me, and I hope I get this right. I think I've got the context and the, and the picture right. He said, as Christians, we should not be surprised with what's going on um, in the world. All the stuff that's there, um, it's been foretold. Jesus warned us. He said, these things are going to happen. Scripture tells us what we can expect. And therefore, as Christians, knowing Scripture, knowing what we know, we should not be surprised. We should not be surprised. Which then makes the next verse, verse 13, um, make absolute sense. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. We are sitting in a 10-day window between Ascension and Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, His glory revealed at Pentecost. A time when the disciples sit in Jerusalem, Obeying Jesus' command to wait. Acts one four reminds us of that commandment. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised. You and I are sitting in a similar position. Wait for the gift. We also can't go anywhere. So wait for the gift. Spend some time. Wait for the gift of the glory of God. Psalm 46 verse 10 calls us to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. In one word, wait. Wait upon the Lord. 
one of the things that struck me as I was preparing was that I've been given so much time under lockdown to wait, to be still and to know. And yet I have, and this is a confession um, It will be recorded on, on technology forever. I confess that I still, even in this time, have filled my time with stuff. Not wasted, um, working in the garden, doing all sorts of things, uh, spending time with wife and, and my son, but not wasted, but still filled it with stuff and did not find enough time to sit and wait, to wait upon the Lord. And may that be my challenge this week, just to sit and wait, especially in this Pentecost time, to sit and wait. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really an amazing time, this. Um, we've got the Cape parrots flying around outside. Uh, the noise goes on all day, a cacophony of Jesus sounds, if you like. Um, but maybe this be our challenge, just to be still, just to stop, to look around, to see the beauty of God, the glory of God revealed around us. May we just wait for Pentecost. Recapping slightly, verse 12, don't be surprised. Verse 13, God's glory is revealed by waiting. Then verse 14 speaks to the outcome, saying, you will be blessed because God's Spirit rests on you. What a picture. And it just took me back to Acts 2, um, verse 3, the picture of they, they saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. The glory of the risen Lord revealed in glory. We should be like that. You and I should be that picture. We should be alive and full of power and excitement for Jesus. And yet we're not. Sadly, we're not. Peter then tells us why and why we struggle and why we, we battle. He tells us, uh, gives us a guide to doing a couple of things. In the second part of the reading, he says, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. He's not talking about us becoming doormats and letting everybody walk over us. He's speaking about us standing up in the glory of God and always, as Jesus did, point to God, point to Jesus, point to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Acknowledge God as front and center in our lives. He says, cast off all anxiety. And that might be pretty tough right now. I mean, we've had scares, COVID's in town, all these things going on. Um, these trying times, uncertain times. But Peter says, cast off anxiety. Remember, Jesus did say to us when he was around, he said to the disciples and to us today, come to me, all who are heavy who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My burden is loved. My yoke is easy. It, it's all there for us, and yet we still struggle. We still take all this stuff on board. Peter continues, be self-controlled. Or as Paul says, take every thought captive. Be alert. In other words, wait, watch. He says in verse 8, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The answer simply, says Peter, resisting. Flee from temptation, says James. <coughs> in scripture, we know Joseph did. When his boss's wife tried to sleep with him, he just ran out of the room, left his jacket behind and bolted for the hills. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm. Because you are not alone. You and I are never, never alone. Because the glory of God is upon us. And the power of His Holy Spirit is with us. Jesus has overcome the world. As Christians, we can too. Resist. Resist, stand firm, says Peter. 
and he says in verse 10, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Wow. There that is. I mean, you know, I must just confess here, yeah, we've been going through Peter over the last couple of weeks in, in Adelaide, and I've just been blown away. It's one of the letters that I've never really spent time in and listened or sort of read and, and focused on. But I challenge you, go and read it, 1 Peter. It's, it's been an amazing journey. It's been a while, um, especially in these times. So in conclusion, Peter ends simply with the ending of the Lord's Prayer. To him be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So the challenge for us today is simple. Wait upon the Lord. And secondly, to acknowledge God in his power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, just thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Lord, that we need not be anxious. Thank you, Lord, that we need not be surprised because we know, we know, or we should know, because we are your children. We know. So, Lord, remove our fears and our anxieties. Let us rise up in your power with all humility, acknowledging you as God our Father. Father, I pray that you will bless each one of this, of these amazing people in this community, that you will touch and change their lives, that when we, we come out and we meet each other again, that the glory of the risen Lord may be upon us. Lord, and tonight, let us to share together in the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Right, let's just join together and sing that amazing tune. Um, we know it well. We probably sang it in nursery school, or not nursery school, Sunday school. Um, and we still sing it today with such gusto. Um, so let's sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus.
Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope that you've been blessed. Remember, we have God's glory, God's power shining upon us. Um, humble yourselves. Wait upon the Lord. This is the season of Pentecost. Know that Jesus loves you, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Go in peace. Go in love. Jesus commanded us to love the world and to love him. May we know his grace in our lives this week. God bless.